Greenville, South Carolina, also formerly known as the Textile Center of the South, grew outwards from the Reedy River. The river was vital to Greenville's mills and factories and can be seen in early Greenville depictions. Around the Reedy River, an important social area has emerged, marked by three bridges. The center bridge is Thomas C. Gower Bridge. The concrete structure connects the north and south sides of downtown Greenville's main street. It also separates Art Crossing to the west and Falls Park to the east. The bridge was originally a wooden structure constructed in the 1970s by the mayor, Thomas C. Gower, to replace the growing city's fording site across the river. The bridge costs $1,500. The saving of time, labor, and wear and tear of vehicles by the change from the old-fashioned way of fording the river is probably equal to the cost of the bridge in any one year. In 1910, the bridge was once again rebuilt, this time in concrete to meet the weight of streetcars. The bridge has remained a center of social and economic activity for Greenville, just as it was back when it was the early city's fording site. The West Bridge is the Swamp Rabbit Bridge. In the early 1900s, a railroad was started in northern South Carolina. It was intended to cross the Appalachian Mountains, but after only 13 miles of construction, the project was stopped due to lack of funds. The railroad became nicknamed the Swamp Rabbit Railroad. By 1997, it was deemed abandoned. During Greenville's revitalization plan, the plan which also renovated the Thomas C. Gower Bridge, the Swamp Rabbit Railroad was bought and with the help of the local Greenville hospital system, was turned into a walking and running trail in an effort to fight obesity. The bridge that crosses the river currently is a symbol of the former railway crossing. It is a wooden footbridge that uses synthetic deck paneling for the handrails and a steel structure. The dam underneath consists of former railroad crossing supports. The area around the bridge has become an art hub, coined Art Crossing for the memory of the railroad, and is host to many local galleries, pieces, and working artists. It is in Falls Park, a suspension bridge spanning 345 feet from end to end. What are some advantages of constructing a suspension bridge? Because the stresses in the bridge are passed through cables and suspenders, slender sections are required. The span is very long in proportion to the amount of materials required. Materials can be transported easily, and time of construction is less. With less materials and easy transport of those materials, a considerable amount of money and energy is saved. In Falls Park, the Liberty Bridge's deck is supported by inclined hangar cables. These support the bridge vertically and horizontally. However, this force alone would not keep the bridge in equilibrium due to the horizontal force in the hangar cable and the radial force from the deck. To oppose these forces, three ringer cables span the entire bridge and work in the opposite direction, equal to the sum of the horizontal force in the hangar cables and the radial force of the deck. While bridges with similar structural concepts have been built in Europe, this bridge is unique in its geometry and there is nothing like it in the United States. The concrete and structural steel were from local suppliers. For example, the cable guardrail used was from a local supplier out of Asheville. This was an alternative to the original designed rail, which was a cable net system that was only available out of Canada. This was a long-term planned project with tremendous amounts of community involvement on the front end. Weekly meetings were held among planners, architects, engineers, the contractor and subcontractors to discuss schedules, plans, and problems. This used to be a kind of crummy two-lane bridge over the falls. We didn't even know there were falls underneath it, and it wasn't really necessary. So they took that out. There's a road to block up, and now it is just a focus for the southern end of downtown. Uh, this lovely Italian design bridge, great falls, great lighting. There were integrated design features from the beginning of the project. For example, the soft blue lighting of the bridge in the night was a part of the design from the beginning. The bridge design created a synthesis of nature and technology that enhances the overall area. It's lovely. It's right here in town and it's just a beautiful city place with lush flowers and around. It's lovely. The design features of it instill pride and ownership for the users 
and the surrounding community. Another measure of sus social sustainability is that it enhances cultural awareness and community identity. Yeah, it's interesting that you can see it. Yeah, and then, and then the rainbow colors, that's what, what I like. Yeah. Rainbow colors? Yeah, when the sun out. When the sun out. Yeah, when the sun out. Or oh, you talking about at night when the lights come on. Yeah. The rainbow when the water is playing, it's pretty beautiful. Beside the bridge. I'm saying yeah. yeah. Falls Park is beautiful. I think it's a great place to bring our kids so they can play and get some energy out, um, but also enjoy the